Florida was once the ultimate picture of paradise, beaches, sunshine, and wildlife living in perfect balance, but that image has started to rot beneath the surface. Today, Florida isn't fighting tourists or hurricanes, it's fighting an invasion. The state has become a war zone for foreign species taking over its ecosystem. Just 4% of its plant life is invasive, but those few invaders cost Florida over half a billion dollars every single year. And now, scientists are proposing something that sounds straight out of a science fiction thriller, releasing a massive apex predator to hunt them down. But the deeper you look, the more it starts to feel less like salvation and more like a potential catastrophe. Florida's Everglades once thrived with over 700 native species, from graceful herons to silent panthers, living in harmony for thousands of years. But today, that harmony has turned into chaos. Over 500 invasive species have flooded the state, spreading across more than 1.7 million acres of wild habitat. They make up a tiny fraction of the plant population, but dominate nearly a third of the state's total biomass. In other words, one out of every three trees in Florida doesn't belong there. The state is now second only to Hawaii in ecological devastation, and the bill keeps growing. But how did paradise turn into this? The answer lies in Florida's booming pet trade. The state's warm, humid, tropical climate is a dream come true for exotic animals and a nightmare for everyone else. When people's pets escape or get released, they don't die off like they would in other states. They thrive. And with climate change erasing the cold winters that used to control their numbers, there's nothing left to stop them from spreading. So, after years of failed control attempts, scientists have turned to a wild idea. They want to unleash a predator, a creature capable of eating the invaders themselves. And they've chosen one of the most dangerous reptiles on Earth, the Komodo dragon. Standing nearly 10 feet long and weighing over 300 pounds, the Komodo dragon isn't just another lizard, it's a monster. It can sprint like a trained athlete, kill with a single bite, and swallow a deer whole in minutes. But the real horror lies in its biology. Its venom lowers blood pressure, prevents clotting, and slowly kills its prey as it stalks them from the shadows. Once bitten, there's no escape. And perhaps the most disturbing fact? A female Komodo doesn't even need a male to reproduce. Through a process called parthenogenesis, one dragon alone could start an entire population. One could become many. So what happens if one of these beasts enters Florida's swamps? For a Komodo dragon, Florida is paradise reborn. Endless humidity, thick vegetation for ambush, and an all-you-can-eat buffet of wild hogs, pythons, and small mammals. It could adapt fast, maybe even faster than expected. Living near cities, scavenging trash, creeping into neighborhoods, evolving into a new kind of urban predator that doesn't fear humans. Over time, the Florida Komodo could become stronger, smarter, and far more unpredictable, a new apex creature that blurs the line between wilderness and civilization. But before we get to that nightmare, let's talk about what the Komodo would face first. Meet Florida's most destructive resident, the wild hog. Descendants of pigs brought over centuries ago, these beasts are ecological bulldozers. They tear through forests, destroy crops, pollute water sources, and cost the state millions in damages every year. A single adult can weigh over 200 pounds and cause chaos wherever it goes. But in a showdown with a Komodo dragon, the result is almost certain. Komodos have been filmed taking down water buffalo over six times heavier than a hog. Their venom breaks down flesh before they even start eating. To them, a wild hog isn't a fight, it's a snack. But that's just the appetizer. The main course waiting in Florida's wetlands is far more dangerous, the Burmese python. These snakes are legendary, stretching up to 20 feet long and weighing over 200 pounds. They've already erased 90% of medium-sized mammals in the Everglades. They eat everything, raccoons, deer, even alligators. Now imagine a Komodo dragon crossing paths with one. It's a battle between stealth and venom, muscle and patience. The Komodo's bite could poison the python within minutes, while the python's crushing coils could break the dragon's bones. The outcome? It depends entirely on who strikes first. But even if the Komodo wins, there's a darker question. What happens next? 
because the Komodo dragon doesn't care about balance or restoration. It's not here to fix nature. It's here to dominate it. That means native animals, the ones we're actually trying to protect, would suffer next. The endangered Florida panther, already down to just a couple hundred individuals, wouldn't stand a chance. One ambush, one bite, and it's gone forever. Marsh rabbits, rare birds, even household pets could become the next victims. The Komodo wouldn't be saving Florida, it would be reshaping it into something entirely new, something built for itself. And the chaos doesn't end there. Every invasive species carries its own hidden arsenal, bacteria, viruses, and parasites that local wildlife can't resist or fight off. The Komodo could unleash diseases Florida's ecosystem has never seen. Or worse, it could fall victim to Florida's native pathogens, wiping out the population in one brutal wave. And if that doesn't happen first, a single cane toad might. These small, toxic amphibians carry enough poison to kill a Komodo with one lick. The very creature meant to destroy Florida's invaders could become a casualty of its own battleground. Then comes the financial side, the part no one wants to talk about. Florida already spends over half a billion dollars a year battling invasive species. Nationwide, the U.S. has lost over $1.2 trillion since the 1960s fighting ecological invasions. Releasing dragons into the wild wouldn't fix that number. It would skyrocket it. Imagine taxpayers funding dragon hunts, control programs, and compensation for damages caused by a creature we brought in ourselves. It's not just a bad idea, it's a financial black hole. And if history tells us anything, it's that this story always ends the same way, in disaster. Australia tried to use cane toads to save its crops, only for the toads to poison everything in their path. Islands introduced mongooses to control rats and instead watched their birds go extinct. Even the beautiful lionfish, once kept in aquariums, now dominates the Atlantic and destroys coral reefs. Every release this to kill that plan has backfired. Every single one. Florida's dragon project could easily become the next tragic headline. And if it does, there's no easy undo button. Once you set an apex predator loose, it doesn't go away quietly. It adapts, multiplies, and changes the rules. You can't cage it again. You can't take back evolution. And if Komodo dragons start thriving in Florida, exterminating them would make the python problem look like child's play. Millions more would be spent chasing dragons through swamps and suburbs. And in the end, humans would once again be cleaning up the mess humans made. But not every experiment in Florida has gone so extreme. Some scientists have taken a smarter, smaller approach. Instead of releasing monsters, they've quietly introduced an unexpected candidate, the honey badger. It's only about three feet long and weighs as much as a small child. But make no mistake, it's one of the most fearless animals on Earth. Lions avoid it. Snakes can't kill it. Its skin is like armor, and it's too stubborn to die. In secret test zones in the Everglades, honey badgers have started doing what drones and hunters failed to do, taking down Burmese pythons. Within months, python nests dropped by nearly 30%. Cameras even caught honey badgers dragging massive snakes through the swamps, and as their numbers grew, small mammals once thought wiped out started reappearing. Raccoons, marsh rabbits, and native birds began to return, slowly, quietly, but surely. It's not flashy, and it's not cinematic, but maybe that's the lesson here. The real problem was never the pythons, the hogs, or even the invaders themselves. It was us, humans. We caused the imbalance. We imported creatures we couldn't control. And then, instead of learning, we tried to fix it with bigger, louder, and more dangerous solutions. We called it conservation, but what we were really doing was gambling with nature's code, one risky experiment at a time. So, before the first Komodo dragon ever sets foot in Florida, we have to ask ourselves, are we restoring nature or are we rewriting it into something unrecognizable? Because once those dragons are out, there's no going back. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.